PhDs. And my PhD is using the carbon of a group, and my PhD is about using 3D printed micromodels, like this one, to investigate subsurface processes such as CCS and UR. My experiment will be used to validate for skill direct numerical no simulations. I'm working with Dr. Hannah Merke, Dr. Julian Mais, and Professor Sebastian Geiger. As a PhD student working in the Institute of Geoenergy and Engineering, I work closely with other PhD students, like Hamid Rafik, who is working in the FAST group and is using 3D printed macromodels to investigate precipitation. So far, I have already validated 3D printed macromodels uh, as a medium to conduct experiments, and in the future, I'm planning to use the advantages of 3D printing to conduct CO2 dissolution experiments, which occur in, during CCS, and uh, experiments in fractured geometries which are present in carbon and rocks. My research will help to successfully capture the physics and extract information from the pore scale and core scale that have the potential to be of scale and to help my colleagues in the Institute of Geoenergy and Engineering working in large scale processes. Hi, my name is Christine Maya and I'm a postdoc at Carbonis Group. In the past decade, our group has been on the forefront of fracture reservoir modeling and simulation developing several numerical methods for flow simulation of fractures on various scales. What if now we could have one single open source package that provides a framework to model all of them? This is exactly the concept of one of our main developments this year. We released the MRST module named Fractures that accompanies a chapter in the new MRST book and provides a powerful tool to widespread community for simulation of flow in fractured reservoirs using different concepts, such as the discrete fracture and matrix model, the dual porosity model, the multi-ray dual porosity model, or a, combina uh, a combination of all of them. The latter might be especially of interest for multi-scale modeling of, for example, small diffuse fractures and uh, large fault structures. On top of this, we also advanced our research into studying the leakage potential of CO2 through fractured cap rocks by developing a workflow that couples geomechanics with fluid flow. In this way, we can integrate stress aperture relationships of fractures and the upscaling workflow of effective fracture network permeabilities. All our developments, together with various examples, have been released as open source code available to the scientific community. All of these and other developments have been only possible through collaboration within the Institute of Geoenergy with PhD students, professors and other postdocs. There are a lot more people I probably should mention at this point, but uh, I list just a few here with whom we published some exciting research this year covering topics like numerical modeling of fracture wall contacts, stress-sensitive fracture network permeabilities, impact of uh, multi-scale heterogeneity on surfactant flooding, and comparison of chemical component transport in fractured reservoirs using dual porosity and link models. Thanks to everyone in the Carbonates group for the amazing support they always provide, especially in these unprecedented times. Hi, my name is Farhana Jafazuddin. Uh, I'm currently an off-campus uh, PhD student based in Malaysia. So this work is part of a collaborative project with uh, Petronas. So, uh, the research aims to understand uh, reactive flow in a carbonate reservoir, where the reactive flow here refers to reactivity between CO2, brine and rock during CO2 geological storage. Due to the reactive natures of carbonate minerals, uh, it is imperative to investigate the complex interactions uh, between the injected CO2 the inside the brine and the rock. Uh, it's also essential to evaluate the impact of the geochemical reactions uh, on rock properties and CO2 flow behavior. So we also aim to develop a better method of modeling the CO2 induced uh, dissolution process, particularly at a continuum scale. We investigated this through a set of uh, lab experiments and numerical simulations. From this project, we have generated uh, experimental data and developed a cost scale reactive transport model, which being uh, calibrated against the lab results. The calibrated model is then used as a base uh, to develop a meter scale to kilometer scale reservoir reactive transport model. The bigger scale model uh, incorporated uh, mineral um, heterogeneities as well as lithophases, uh, heterogeneities and structural unconformities are suitable to be used to understand the impact of um, heterogeneities on reactive transport. Finally, we can uh, quantify risk of formation damage uh, due to chemically induced uh, dissolution process. 
uh, during COD injections. Good day, I'm Herwald. I'm a PhD student and I hail from the Caribbean island of Trinidad and Tobago. I'm supervised by Sebastian and Florian. My research involves the development of more accurate transfer functions for spontaneous immobition and gravity drainage. Now, why is this important? With expanding technology, LiDAR, better production uh, logging tools, our ability to characterize reservoirs is ever increasing. Additionally, environmental and market forces continuously drive the need for more efficient reservoir production forecasting. This is why we need more accurate models which can capture the subsurface physics, which can lead to better predictions that allow management to make more informed decisions. So what's our approach? How do we go about developing better transfer functions? We use fine scale models that is an explicit representation of the fractal uh, system and also analytical solutions where feasible, which can capture the physics of our defined problem. These explicit and analytical solutions, however, are not viable for field scale situations due to the computational limitations and more complicated boundary and initial conditions found in an actual reservoir setting. So we use these analytical and fine scale solutions as a truth case and test various hypotheses, machine learning, pseudoization of certain parameters, etc., against those cases that can be applied. And, and from that, when we test our hypothesis, we can uh, find solutions that can be applied and provide more accurate results at the field scale. As you know, modeling requires insight into the right use of parameters, right assumptions, utilization of various software, and a knowledge of the state of the art. Working with a team who are each specialized in specific areas, from George, who focuses more on a geological setting, to David for well testing, Leslie and Ali for modeling, allows us to draw upon the specific expertise and integrate it into our work when necessary, making us a more efficient team. Thank you very much for your time and enjoy the rest of your day. Hello everyone, my name is Jackson and I'm originally from Indonesia. The title of my PhD research project is Simulation of Chemical Enhanced Oil Recovery Processes in Natural Fractured Carbonate Reservoir. Now I'm working under the supervision of Professor Sebastian Geiger and Professor Eric McKay, and also in collaboration with Christian Mayer, Mark Bentley, and Ali al -Rudaini. Okay, let's get started. Why is this research important? Because we combine the experimental results and also numerical simulations in order to understand how the effectiveness of surfactant-based EOR impacted by geological heterogeneity across scales, start from the core scale and centimeter scale to the meter scale in the larger scales. In the first part, we analyze a series of laboratory experiments of spontaneous inhibitions and coarse flooding in order to get better understanding of biochemical processes during surfactant injection at the core scales. We then build 3D core scale simulation models and using SSS history matching, we are able to match the laboratory data and parameterize the surfactant models. In the second part, we then implemented the result from the core scale to higher resolution models that preserve the complexity of heterogeneity of carbonate formations in the interwell and also the sector scales. This larger scale were based on two outcrop analogs from France and Morocco, respectively, which captured the reservoir architecture inherent to the productive carbon reservoir system in the Middle East. Finally, our findings present a new insight into how the uncertainty in production forecast during surfactant floodings depends on first, on the way how the surfactant models are parameterized, and secondly, how the geological heterogeneity is simplified. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please ask me in the Q&A sessions after this presentation. Bye now. Hi everyone, my name is Mark. Um, I'm coming towards the end of my PhD now. Unfortunately, I'll be I'll be sad to leave, especially this uh, great research group that we've got at Harriet Watt. Um, but yeah, handed in my thesis last Friday, so so coming towards the end now. Um, the, my PhD 
looked at or has been looking at uh, multi-scale modeling within the context of double porosity or, or dual continuum mater um, materials, uh, specifically building constitutive models with respect to different processes. So for the first two thirds um, of, of our work, we've been looking at building uh, poor elastic dual continuum constitutive models. And that kind of fits in nicely to some of the work that Leslie's been doing with respect to the flow diagnostic stuff. So I think some of the work that we did in this PhD is, has kind of fit in nicely to, for example, um, some of her stress permeability calculations. Um, for the for the other part, the more recent part, we've also been looking at data driven modeling, data driven modeling, and uh, specifically trying to use machine learning to model the dynamics of matrix matrix fracture transfers, which are conventionally just modeled using uh, a linear relation, which yeah can be in inaccurate in in certain um, times. Um, so this this later work is really in its infancy and there's lots of exciting stuff that we can be doing. In fact, um, we've recently just started a PhD within the group that's going to be kind of carrying this on. And I think that's, that's really exciting is uh, the intersection of uh, traditional physics-based modeling and, and, and machine learning and seeing what we can get out of that. Hi, my name is Alu Rodaini. I have a BSc and MSc, Petroleum Engineering from University of Baghdad. I joined the Iraqi Ministry of Oil in 1999, and I joined the Reserve Carbonate Reserve Group in 2016 for doing my PhD. My research is about simulation of chemical enhanced oil recovery in a fractured carbonate reservoir using dual porosity models. The importance of my research coming from the fact that more than half of all remaining reserve oil reserve held in carbonate reservoir. This, this reservoir have heterogeneity in, in rocks and fluids and difference in recovery performance. And so it is there is a high potential for chemical EOR. The research question we are trying to answer is can we predict the depth of invasion of a chemical component and its subsequent effects inside a matrix in a fractured reservoir? Are the current dual process simulations are sufficient to do that, or new tools need to be developed? So I'm working with Sebastian and Eric as my first and second supervisor. Also, I work with Jackson and Christine and other members of the Carbonate Reservoir Group. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Chukameka Christopher Engemana, a PhD candidate jointly supervised by Professors um, Florian Duster and Sebastian Giga. I'm currently working on predictive dual continuum modeling. What does that exactly mean? Well, the dual continuum modeling technology has been over time adopted as the default modeling technology for natural fracture reservoirs. However, the accuracy of this technology is contingent on how accurately the transfers between the fractures and the matrix continuum are modeled. As a result of this, several researchers have hypothesized on different transfer function models out there. So the question is, now how do I know, how do you know what transfer function to adapt and apply while modeling a particular reservoir scenario. Well, reservoir engineers have over time adopted a workflow that requires tuning the transfer function parameters in order to validate the model prior application. Sounds interesting? Not really. Now, the problem here is that we'll be forcing our model to replicate the dynamic behavior of the true reference case at the expense of the true precursors responsible for that behavior. Now, what do I mean? The twin model may get a match with real production signature, 
but the chain parameters will defy common sense in geologic reality. In other words, our model will be restricted in application. So, what if, just what if it's possible that we are able to circumvent this tuning phase and instead replace with a more generic diagnostic practical guideline that will enable us to proactively choose the correct transfer function to apply and adoption and apply when, where, and how. Now that I'll be devoting the next two years here trying to figure out in my research. Wish me luck. The ultimate deliverable of my research will be to improve on general understanding of the physics of flow in natural refractory reservoirs enough to be able to build more reliable models to be able to optimize development of natural refractory reservoirs so we can exploit effectively the chunk of reserve in there as shown in my chart here and also to be able to effectively explore other environmentally friendly and economically viable operations. At the moment, I'm collaborating with different research teams over here, the cabinet research team, the uh, MOFI team, the dual country modeling team, all focused on exploring to improve on the general understanding of the physics of flow in natural refractory reservoirs. Ultimately, in a couple of months, we should be sharing with you some of our um, deliverables. In the meantime, thank you for your time and stay tuned. See you then. Bye. Hi, my name is David Egia. Um, I'm a postdoctoral research associate working with Carbonate Reservoir Group. My research area is in the area of integrated reservoir characterization for both conventional and unconventional resources. My research activity uh, includes modeling, simulating, and analyzing dynamic flow behaviors in fractured networks in fractured reservoirs and how this impact reservoir uh, performance in terms of hydrocarbon production as well as geological storage of fluid such as CO2. The scale of my uh, research covers range of questions relating to fundamental understanding of fluid flow in fractured reservoirs to application of this knowledge in order to maximize the development of resources in this type of geological formations. My research work enjoys great collaboration with colleagues at IGE, especially with those whose project involves development and advancement of open source modeling and simulation tools. And this allows me to test uh, new modeling concepts. My project also involves active collaboration uh, with industry partners who most often sponsor my projects, as well as provide uh, uh, real field data uh, for my analysis and studies. Thank you. very pleased to be a part of the 2020 energy simulation event. My name is Fahd Al-Hashmi and I am from the United Arab Emirates. Uh, for my background, I have a bachelor's in petroleum geoscience engineering from Khalifa University in 2011 and I worked in Adnok onshore as an operational geologist for one of the fields for four years. I have an MSc in reservoir evaluation and management from Harriot University UK 2016 and now I'm doing a PhD in petroleum engineering and Harriet Watt University as well. My research title is about the development and application of flow diagnostic workflow and tools to validate and rank static and dynamic methods for carbonate reservoirs. Here I'm trying to approximate how the geological uncertainties in giant carbonate reservoirs with large transition zone can, could, can impact production without using conventional full physics simulators using flow diagnostics. Also capture the impact of reservoir rock typing and the possibility of using flow diagnostic to find or select a smaller number uh, or representative mo models to take forward to full physics simulations. As for the importance of this research, carbonate reservoirs had always been a challenge due to, to its heterogeneity. 
it would be ideal to explore all the static models built, but unfortunately, it would be computationally prohibitive and time-consuming and demanding. Flow diagnosis could be a valid tool to explore all of these static models and visualize the uncertainties and flow behaviors. And that in turn will help in accelerating reservoir modeling and simulation workflows. And thank you very much for your time. Hello, everyone. This time from Abu Dhabi. My name is Alfredo Freitas. I hope you remember me. The last time we met, I present to you the way forward in my research, which was basically to try to better understand the pressure transient behavior of fracture reservoirs without the very constraining assumptions of analytical models. In my research, I generated a very comprehensive data set out of numerical simulation, and I apply machine learning methods to try to understand, to classify those responses and understand not only the most common responses in fracture reservoirs, but also the geological controls behind them. The applications that we see are not only limited to the oil industry, but also with applications with carbon capture and storage and geothermal operations. In my research, I have the opportunity to interact with almost all the group, and my research well fits without the strat within the strategy of the carbon reservoir group to study the reservoir at multi scales. And this one, it's practically 500 or can go up to 500 meters around the well and with very much detail in the near well bore area. So we are actually covering multi scale problem, uh, uh, problems. If I can leave you with a few images, I would represent it like this. The very complicated task of identifying fracture reservoirs or trying to understand pressure transient behaviors. But we have the help of the machine and algorithms of machine learning to finally come up with answers and the most common classification of well test responses. Thank you very much, Energy Simulation, for supporting my PhD. I hope that you are okay and safe. I hope to see you next year. Thank you very much. Hi everybody, my name is Dmitro Petrovsky. I am a research associate at Carbonate Reservoir Group. I am a member of the Joint Industry Research Project, Rapid Reservoir Modeling. My primary responsibility is the development of modern fast and flexible flow diagnostics tools for reservoir characterization. The project, or simply RRM, is a joint research effort of Heritwood University, Imperial College London, and University of Calgary. The aim of the project is the development of a new sketch-based reservoir modeling tool for fast reservoir prototyping and evaluation. The picture on the left shows the graphical user interface that allows for the intuitive and geologically consistent sketch-based reservoir modeling. The picture on the right shows various reservoir properties such as deformation or facies type, permeability, pressure and time of flight. The new flow diagnostics interface facilitates rapid flow simulations based on simplified physics equations that substantially reduces the modeling time typical to conventional full physics simulations. If you're interested in more details regarding the rapid reservoir modeling package as the whole or the flow diagnostics model in particular, please get in touch with me. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Yong Wan Bin. I'm currently a PhD student from Hello World University. My PhD title is Multiscale Characterization of Porosity and Permeability for Malaysian Carbonate Reservoir Rocks Supported by Numerical Simulations. I'm currently supervised by Professor Sebastian Geiger and Dr. Kamajit Singh. My research focuses on Malaysian carbonate reservoir and is about porosity and permeability. I'm using some state-of-the-art CT imaging equipment to scan and analyze the carbonate samples at different scales. Then I will conduct some upscaling numerical modeling. 
The outcomes of the study can be applied in reservoir simulation for CO2 storage and hydrocarbon production. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Josh Costagonge, and I'm originally from Portugal. My PhD is under the supervision of Professor Sebastian Geiger and Dr. Daniel Arnold. To summarize my PhD project, I have conceptualized, synthesized, interpreted, modeled, and simulated 72 open access carbonate reservoir models. Each model has its own unique geological uncertainties, which can be related to both siliciclastic and carbonate reservoirs at large. What will be released is first of its kind because one will be able to rebuild and interpret their own geological model with a data set that we will provide but also that one can history match the released models against our undisclosed truth case. The importance and impact of this research is to hopefully aid our industry in areas of carbonate reservoir characterization, reservoir simulation, reservoir optimization, history matching, and finally machine learning. So thank you very much for listening. Have a wonderful day. Hello, I'm Yue Ying Wang, a academic visit from China University of Portugal. Now, I'm working with Sebastian Gig on the numerical simulation using the coupling model of Dashi and non Dashi flow in the carbonate reservoir. The carbonate reservoir is one of the very important reservoirs I have been engaged in the study for more than 10 years, including how the fluid flows, how to extract oil from them. Well, all this research are all need the information of the numerical simulation. The combination reservoirs are different from the conventional reservoirs, and they are very complex. The different size of cavities and fractures Thus, the fluid flows in them can sometimes slowly and sometimes faster. The company model considers the difference of the Dashi equation and the Foothammer equation. The simulation results are more reasonable and more extra. Hi, my name is Yedidia Gelman. I am a second year petroleum engineering PhD student at Harriet Watt University in the EGIS department. My supervisors are Professor Patrick Corbett and Professor Sebastian Geiger. My research is focused on characterizing aquifer encroachment patterns and water breakthrough rates in high permeability, heterogeneous gas reservoirs. The key questions that I'll be addressing in my research are one, where will the water come from? In other words, will it be a bottom or edge drive? Will it follow a uniform front or a fingering pattern? Will it follow a high perm streak? Second question, when will water breakthrough occur? When will it hit the wells? And the third question is, at what rates will water hit the wells? Will it drizzle? Will it rain? Or should we tell Noah to get his ark ready because there's a flood coming? These issues have a significant impact on field development and management, such as production facility design, timing and location of infield wells, design of well completion, and other aspects as well. So how am I tackling these issues? I'm starting off with defining and quantifying the reservoir parameters that are influencing water encroachment patterns. I'm using a numerical simulation sector model in an experimental design workflow. Then I will narrow the range of uncertainty and better define the encroachment pattern by calibrating the numerical sector model to match pressure transit analysis and high frequency production data. In my research, I'm using an extensive data set from a large offshore gas field that is experiencing water encroachment and energy support from a very large aquifer. My goal is to come up with a set of rules, tools, and workflows that could be applied in similar fields and would assist in forecasting aquifer-related reservoir dynamics. 
My kids and friends often ask me what my research is all about. To keep things simple, my quickest answer is I'm solving plumbing problems. Subsurface plumbing. My name is Saeed Al Amri from UAE, recently graduated with a PhD degree and I'm really proud to be the first female in my family to hold a PhD degree in petroleum engineering. Currently, I join ADNOC as a reservoir engineer and I'm looking forward to utilize the knowledge and the skill gained from my PhD journey. In this research, a polynomial case expansion based proxy modeling is coupled with the non-starting genetic algorithm multi-objective optimization workflow to identify engineering parameters that enable us to optimize WAG injection in both synthetic and real fractured carbonate reservoir. The contribution from this research is the implementation, testing, and application of an efficient framework to optimize WAG injection. As a key result, the research clearly illustrates the potential of integrating proxy modeling and multi-objective optimization with a new reservoir characterization method to identify WAG injection design that have the potential to increase the reservoir performance and maximize the profit of the field. Assalamu alaikum. Hello everyone. My name is Mohammed al -Breki. I am from United Arab Emirates. I have a bachelor's degree in geology for petroleum and water from UAE University in 2004. And I got lucky in the same year to join Adno Group companies. Uh, I start my career as the operation geologist, where involving in the tennis of wells. Then I become reservoir geologist to involve in full field development plan, designing the well trajectory. And before I moved to UK to do my master degree, I was working as a senior geomodelist. Uh, in 2015, I get the chance to do my master degree in reservoir evaluation and management in Hiratwat University. And since 2016, I was doing my PhD with the Carbonate Reservoir Group. My work, uh, I'm working in investigating and analyzing how different modeling decisions, such as reservoir rock typings approach or saturation modeling approach for a giant carbonate reservoir will impact the oil in place estimation and hydrocarbon distribution in a static model and what will be the optimum modeling workflow to build geological model for tight carbonate reservoir with large transition zone as we have in our region and also how we can integrate localized fracture and vicinity of the fault corridor into the static model. My research is very important in our region because our, our carbonate reservoir are known for their complex geological heterogeneity and large transition zone in some low probability reservoir. Due to that a central challenge, and this reservoir is to estimate the hydrocarbon reserve and quantify the possible upside and downside when you're modeling the initial hydrocarbon distribution. I working directly with uh, I'm working with uh, Sebastian Giger as my supervisor and my second supervisor is Patrick. Also, I have my project is involved for uh, I like working with the Saeed Al Amri and with Fahd Al Hashmi from Adnok, and also I get support always uh, from the rest of the teams in Carbonate Reservoir Group. Thank you very much. And see you soon. Hi everyone, my name is Emmanuel Libya. I'm part of the Carbonate Reservoir Group, working under the supervision of Professor Sebastian Gaigai, and I work on numerical simulation of enhanced oil recovery processes in a heterogeneous reservoir. Population growth and the need to increase the standard of living has been seen to impact the energy consumption and the population has predicted to grow from uh, 7.5 billion people to 9.2 billion people between 2018 and 2040. The GDP also is expected to grow between by 3.5% between 2018 and 2040 on a year-on-year -year basis with major uh, majority of this growth taking place in the developing countries. Therefore, oil will remain a, an important player in the economic growth of developing countries and also a dominant part of the global energy mix as we transition to low carbon sources. Um, the pandemic and other sources has caused a short term oversupply of, um, of oil and brought down um, the oil price and had made oil companies to 
cut down exploration activities and EOR, focusing more on maintaining production from existing field. This will, however, cause a supply chain in about a decade from now and may cause oil companies to revert back to EOR processes as a, a technology to meet the global energy demand. It has to recovery processes such as polymer flooding and what injection is a well-established technology. However, they are not widespread. This is because EOR processes is a capital-intensive project and would require adequate screening and uncertainty quantification to reduce risk. My project seeks to develop a robust and a fast workflow to calculate and evaluate the financial upside and downside of EOR processes such as polymer flooding and wild ingestion considering geological uncertainties. I collaborate with on the uncertainty quantification group Dan Arnold and Demianov vastly to carry out this research. Thank you. Samuel Mbusbe, a first graduate student at the Institute of Geoenergy Engineering at Edward University. I'm a Nigerian. My study concerns screening of mature fields in the United Delta for the EOR purposes. This is much more of a current theme in oil and gas business, as most of the oil and gas production in the world comes from mature fields. It requires how modern reservoir modeling tools provide an input for commercial decisions such as whether or not EOR options are of value, in what type of fields, and at what stage of fields life cycle. This is very important research for Nigerian reservoirs as most of the giant reservoirs in the Niger Delta have been producing for more than three decades. Probably they are in their stage of declining in production. Therefore, there is need for research in integrating geology, petrophysics, and engineering so as to come up with proper decisions that will lead to extracting of maximum possible volume of oil and gas in the Niger Delta. And this can be done by generating the necessary available geological and petrophysical information needed for the screening of economically viable and best EOR candidate for Nigerian reservoirs. In this very important journey, I have been working with Mark Bentley, Jin Chengma, and Carl Stegen. Thank you and stay safe. Hello everyone, I hope you and your families are healthy and safe during these difficult and unprecedented times. My name is Abdurzak Awit. I am born and raised in Libya and currently working as a petroleum engineer with Weatherford UK and residing in Aberdeen, Scotland. I am off-camp PhD student under the supervision of Professor Sebastian Giger. My PhD research focuses on full field reservoir simulation and optimization with advanced pool completions. In my research, I will address and provide solutions to some issues and challenges related to the representation of the near Wilbur region and completions in such complex will scenarios, and the coupling of these completions to the full field reservoir models. One particular challenge is to model the will completion physics at the details required to resolve and optimize the flow dynamics accurately while capturing the scale of reservoir heterogeneities in the near Wilbur region. In the end of this short video, I would like to thank Hertwart University for giving me this opportunity, and particularly I would like to thank my supervisor, Sebastian Giger, for providing me with guidance and feedback throughout this project. Finally, please stay safe and look out for each other in these difficult times. Thank you. and MSc from the University of Baghdad. Uh, I am joined working uh, in Iraqi oil ministry in 2004 and I am joined uh, uh, Carbonate Reservoir Group in 2020. 
I'm working in identifying remaining oil saturation across scales in mature carbonate reservoirs. The importance of this research uh, because the heterogeneity is one of the main issues in many oil fields that affect on the performance of the oil fields and oil recoverable from uh, these reservoirs by the oil remaining through production of field cycle life. The research question, we try to identify small scale distribution of residual oil in the unswept regions and investigate how different IOR and EOR could improve recovery by performing the appropriate numerical simulations in these high resolutions models and test if flow diagnostic could be used to provide a fast screening method for these IOR and EOR options. Uh, I'm working uh, with uh, uh, Professor Dr. Sebastian as uh, supervisor and Dr. Bentley as co-advisor and with my uh, friend uh, Ali Arudini. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Amanjol Kubev and I'm a PhD student. My topic is Computational Explicit Modeling of Rock and Fluid Mechanics in Fractures. I work with Nathaniel Forbes and Skip, Thomas Phillips, uh, Yuhai Zhang, Christine Meyer, Raphael March, Nico Kapman, Kevin Bisdom, and my supervisors Andreas Bush and Florian Dosser. I'm working on basically designing and developing a fracture deformation simulator and uh, the simulator consists of three main algorithms contact detection algorithm, normal contact interaction algorithm and also tangential contact interaction algorithms and the performance of that algorithm if you can see on the video from on the right hand side it's essentially a fracture that initially uh, not deformed, but then because of applied stress, you see that how fracture deforms. And we also implemented a fracture permeability solver based on Stokes equation that enables us to calculate permeability inside this complicated fracture geometry. And we use this simulator to investigate stress permeability relationship. Why is it important? It provides tools to understand deformation and flow in fractures. This research also predicts permeability change when your stress changes because of fluid injection or because of fluid production from or into the reservoir. And it also helps to assess the risk of CO2 leakage. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Leslie Gutierrez. I am a PhD student of the Carbonate Reservoir Group. I am originally from Mexico. I'm supervised by Professor Geiger, Professor Doster, and Professor Bush. My research is a promechanical coupling with flow diagnostics, and I cannot find a better way to explain it rather than using a real fracture outcrop from the North Sea. Let's look at it. As you can see here, we can observe, we can touch, and we can measure every single property of the reservoir. In reality, we always characterize and model the reservoir using limited sort of performance during the prediction of the reservoir performance. And in order to tackle this uncertainty, we need to assess a broad and representative domain that can account for the mechanical effect on the change of the reservoir properties because they will modify the flow paths, the reservoir connectivity, and ultimately the reservoir recovery. That's why we propose a uh, mechanical screening through flow diagnostics, which will allow us to have a quick and computationally efficient tool that can allow us to select candidates for more detailed full physics reservoir studies. And and therefore, we can op optimize that process. My project has been linked to Victoria Spinner's work for dual porosity flow diagnostics to Mark Ashworth 
work in order to represent the micromechanics of the hydromechanical coupling, but this workflow can be easily included in uncertainty quantification workflows for different projects involving the oil industry, the carbon capture storage, and thermal projects as well. Thank you very much for your attention. Bye now. Hi everyone, my name is Julien. I am originally from France, but I moved to the UK 10 years ago, and now I'm a research fellow in Professor Geiger's team. My research involves the development of combustion model for digital rock physics, or DRP, and it really matters because even though DRP is routinely employed to investigate subsurface process, it does not apply to carbonate reservoir. And I'm going to explain this today using my kids' toys. So here is my core sample, this is my reservoir, and this is my computer. So it's a typical carbonate reservoir sample with a fracture in the red duplo, macropores in the blue duplos, and microporosity in the white and yellow duplos. So it's a multiscale domain. Unfortunately, we do not have well-established multiscale models. So we'll have a model this uh, using Darcy scale modeling or pore scale modeling. But in the same way that you're not going to apply to model reservoir flow at the pore scale, you're not going to model pore scale flow at the micro porosity scale. You need accurate modeling for all the scales. And if your domain is multiscale, your models need to be multiscale. So our objective is to perform many numerical simulations with multiphase flow, with reactive transport at every scale separately and together. Doing this, we will be generating a very large amount of data, and then we want to extract from this data upscale properties. But we're not going to do this by hand. We're going to use the latest machine learning tools, because these tools are really well suited for this type of problem, assimilating a large amount of data, extracting the main features, and train a neural network to upscale properties such as permeability. This is how you solve the digital physics problem for carbonate reservoir. Hello, it's Patrick Corbett. 2020 was the year of geoenergy, of geoengineering and of geopoetry. Hello ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for attending the session so far. I am Saeed Gambari, I am from Iran. I'm working as research associate at the Institute of Geoenergy Engineering. My research interests are modeling underground CO2 storage, as well as CO2R and their associated processes. So my research could be regarded as a key component for energy transition deployment in the UK and perhaps globally. It helps to better understand the processes that occur at subsurface and the different scales which could contribute to safe and permanent storage of CO2. It also helps to understand the degree of risk as well as delivering accurate estimates of CO2 storage and UR potentials. Since joining Harriet Watt University, I had the pleasure to work with a number of colleagues in our CO2 group Professor Eric Mackay, Dr. Gillian Pickup, Dr. Gangwang, and many other colleagues. I am also involved in supervising a number of PhD students and working on CCS area and CO2. Thank you very much.
Hello everyone, my name is Gang Wang. I'm currently working on hydrogen storage as a research fellow at IGE. So today I'm going to briefly talk to you about my research project. Nowadays, hydrogen is increasingly considered to be an energy fuel in the future, since it's clean, efficient, and sustainable. There are three types of hydrogen production, which are gray, blue, and green hydrogen. Gray hydrogen entails the process of steam methane reforming. Basically, natural gas is converted into hydrogen, but with the unavoidable product of carbon dioxide. When this process is incorporated with carbon capture and storage, it turns into blue hydrogen. On the other hand, hydrogen can be also produced from the process of electrolysis. So water is decomposed into hydrogen and oxygen with the renewable energy. At this stage, most of the hydrogen uh, is currently produced from fossil-based process. In other words, all three types of hydrogen will coexist in the near-term future. In fact, this is where my research product kicks in. We take a step forward of gas storage and to investigate the visibility of managing all three gases in a centralized hybrid complex. Basically, this industry cluster will enable the cyclic storage withdrawal of hydrogen for energy generation, cyclic storage and withdrawal of methane for hydrogen production, cycling of seawater and brine for heat and pressure. At the same time, we also wish to have the permanent storage of carbon dioxide. So the central objective for my research is to investigate the key influencing physical process in this multi-phase subsurface system. Ideally, the research outcome is to provide some useful and practical insights in terms of optimization for surface uh, facility planning and also uh, subsurface fluid management. So that is my project and thank you so much for your time and interest. Hello, my name is Masara Awaj and I'm from Libya. I am working on modeling near well bore effect during CO2 injection, that which occur, occur due to the uh, disturbances of the formation during CO2 injection. The near well bore effect are divided in three types, thermal effect, geochemical effect, and geomechanical effects. For the purpose of this study, we'll be focusing only on the geochemical effects, such as salt precipitation, particularly sodium chloride precipitation and acid reaction. Modeling this effect is important because the, um, these near well bore effects might affect the formation porosity permeability and drop integrity, and therefore the long-term well injectiv injectivity of CO2 could be improved or impaired. So this effect will be modeled and investigated using CNG gem simulator under isothermal conditions. The main objective of this research are studying the effect of salt precipitation and acid reaction on the near well bore region. Also will will be performing a single well tracer test to investigate the um, residual gas saturation and we will investigate the effect of um, chemical reactions happening during wag injection on um, injectivity and rock integrity will also determine the distance from the well uh, from the injection well in CCS projects at which injectivity is no longer a function of uh, near well bore effect issues and rather dependent on uh, storage capacity consideration. We will also study the effect of varying some parameters such as injection flow rate, capillary pressure, and uh, ecospace mobility on salt precipitation. Thank you for listening. Bye. Hello everyone, I'm Vahid Awazari and I'm from Iran. I have a background in petroleum engineering and I joined Harriet Bond University two years ago. My PhD thesis is about optimization of mineral scale squeeze treatments and I'm now part of the flow assurance and scale team. I'm working with Dr. Oscar Vasquez and Professor Eric McKay in FAST group. 
Mineral scaling is one of the problematic challenges in oil production wells, as it can plug the well and also the surface facilities. One of the most techniques to tackle the problem is using chemical scale inhibitors and injecting the chemical into the production well. For example, in offshore, there should be a supply vessel or a boat in order to deliver the chemical scale inhibitor to each of the wells in the sea that has the chemical problem that has the scale problem. Now there are a couple of questions here. So what is the optimum volume of scale inhibitor which should be injected in each of the wells? And also can we minimize the cost of water treatment in the field or not? Or in the bottom we can see that for a single well, so it has to be produced for a couple of years and the produced water should be treated during that period. So what's the optimum frequency for well intervention for the purpose of squeeze treatment and to injecting the chemical and how much chemical should be injected in each operation? These are the questions I'm trying to answer in my PhD by using some uh, specific and fit-to-purpose algorithms for optimization and to optimize the operation and minimizing the cost. Hi, my name is Hugo Sanchez. I'm from Mexico. I'm sponsored by Pemex and Conasi. I'm working on mutual solvents because are used as a pre flush in scale inhibitor squeeze treatments to address the issue of scale inhibitor propagation and impact on flow and inhibitor retention along with any impacts on rock properties such as permeability and mineralogy. Here is the plot of the retention of the scale inhibitor. My research is important for the reason that mutual solvents prepares the surface of the rock and enables greater retention of scale inhibitor enhancing squeeze lifetime. I'm working with Ivan Davis, Wendy McQuigan, Tom McGravy, Alan Beteta, Lorraine Book, and Tom Clark. Here is the process of the core floats I have done. Thank you. Hi everyone, this is Hassan Abadi. I'm original from Iraq and my PhD research is about modeling and upscaling low salinity water flooding. I'm working under the supervision of Carl Steven and Eric McCarr. All right, so for over than four years during my PhD research, uh, we were able to introduce some new fundamental understandings of fluid flow behavior of salt transport during low salinity water flooding. Uh, these results have been published in various prestigious journals and different articles. So, for example, we modified the advection dispersion equation in order to capture salinity transport during such a process. We also modified the fractional flow behavior to include the effect of the retardation used because of the dispersion and effective concentration. Then we introduced a semi-analytical solution and uh, after that an analytical solution to predict the fluid flow performance in layered models. These models were applicable for EOR process in general, including low salinity water flooding. Then we examined the performance of low salinity in uh, randomly distributed models in which the vitrophysical properties were obtained from a carbonate reservoir and a sand store reservoir, where we made a comparison between these models. More recently, we are working on uh, some numerical issues that may encounter reservoir engineers for using a cross scale models. In order to solve these numerical issues, we introduced two novel methods of our scalings. We examined these upscaled methods for various uh, models where an excellent match was observed for uh, these different models compared with the high resolution model. Thank you very much for listening. Hello, uh, I hope you are doing well. My name is Saleh Larzian, I'm from Iran. 
and I'm working on numerical simulation of the capillary end effect in different wetting systems. In reservoir engineering, it is really important to get correct relative permeability and capillary pressure data from experiments. But when we have a capillary end effect at the end of the system, we will get erroneous results. So it is important to understand the effect of capillarity on water flow during the displacement process and we will have a capillary pressure discontinuity at the end of the system that can affect water saturation profile inside the system. So we can have, in water, si water wet systems, we can have water accumulation and in oil wet systems we can have water depletion at the end of the system. So it is important to understand the physics of the problem and also uh, it is really important to incorporate capillary and effect uh, in our numerical simulation uh, calculations. So this is one part of my PhD and another part is how to correct for capillary end effects when we have the results from co-injection experiments. And we have presented a method that can correct mm, the, the results that we get from co-injection experiments for the capillary end effect. And the last part of my thesis is about heterogeneous systems where we have different sections with different wettability properties so like water wet, mixed wet, water wet, mixed wet, or oil wet, you know? So at these points of different, uh, these points of uh, capillary pressure discontinuity, water can accumulate or can deplete along the system. So, I think this is the My name is Alek Ashkov. I'm a research fellow at Harriet Watt and I work together with my colleagues from FAST team towards global net zero emissions target. Methane is a colorless, odorless main component of natural gas. When it's burned for electricity, it is cleaner than coal. But if it escapes into the atmosphere, it can warm the planet more than the same amount of carbon dioxide. Methane has a global warming potential 28 times larger than CO2. It is responsible for 23% of the global warming produced by uh, greenhouse gases. Well bore integrity failures are associated with all subsurface developments. Well plugging, which is currently viewed as the main mitigation solution, does not guarantee reduction in methane emissions. Millions of abundant oil and gas wells exist around the world. Fugitive emissions from abundant wells remain for decades and already been identified as one of the principal methane emission sources to the atmosphere. Considering global energy demands, it is certain that gas development will continue, creating more and more aging wells. Significant leaks must be structurally remediated. The most common technologies utilize cement. A key limitation of the cement is that cement particles not able to penetrate features in the rock formation through which reservoir fluids, like for example methane, can escape. Harriet Watt has developed a technology to disconnect the well from the rock formation to the wellbore and up to the surface. This is achieved by embedding insoluble mineral salts within the porous medium forming a gas-tight plug. The method we propose achieves the co-precipitation of at least two insoluble salts. With immediate reaction, it means there is no waiting on setting. The Syrian mineral is extremely insoluble, stable over geological time frames, and impermeable. It is inert and doesn't degrade on exposure to downhole chemicals. The method can be performed via a well-established bulkhead injection of fluids and can be applied by pumping solids-free solutions using existing infrastructure. It means there is no need for it. To ensure a toxic-free environment for the future generations, we propose a method to mitigate methane leakage from the abundant wells. We seek pilot onshore application. This allows us to develop a cost-effective methane leaking mitigation strategy for the millions of abundant oil and gas wells worldwide. Hello, everyone. My name is Hajo Rodriguez, and I'm a last-year PhD student at Herwatt Watt University. To pursue my PhD, I left Brazil four years ago and moved to Edinburgh, the beautiful Scottish capital that became my home for now and also introduced me to the concept of winter. My PhD is on operations optimization and inorganic scale in offshore CCUS projects or carbon capture utilization and storage. We're basically trying to answer the question, how can operators use CO2, which is a greenhouse gas, for enhance our recovery 
in carbonate reservoirs in the most effective way, both reducing emissions and avoiding scale deposition in their production systems. The challenge here lies on the fact that these are carbonate rocks, therefore highly heterogeneous with fractures and high permeability zones that require mobility control methods such as WAG, water alternating gas, and also a probabilistic approach rather than deterministic since the characterization of these rocks is very uncertain. Also, carbonate reservoirs can be extremely reactive in the presence of CO2 dissolved in brine, causing dissolution within the reservoir and subsequent scale deposition downstream. One of my favorite aspects of my PhD is the interaction with brilliant scientists from different backgrounds, which expands my horizons both technically and culturally. The people that have directly influenced my research are naturally my supervisors, Eric Mackay and Daniel Arnold. But my research has received significant contribution from other researchers in the group, like Ken Sorby, Duarte Silva, Fahid Zari, Oscar Vasquez, among others. And to them, and also to any simulation and all other sponsors of our group, I'd like to say thank you for all your support.